So have you ever wondered when you set up a business, if you've already set up a business or when you set up a business, what's the best structure? Uh, so as this is the uh, second video in the four part series relating to bankruptcy, I'm going to talk about the way to potentially organize your business to protect yourself in the in the event of a bankruptcy. But as I've mentioned before, I've been bankrupt twice. So if you want to find out how to, how to best structure your business so that it protects your personal assets, and that's what I'm going to talk about. So, so check it out. Check out this video. In this video, I'm going to share with you uh, some understandings relating to, as this, is, as this is all about bankruptcy and administration for your business, what I'm going to share with you is some principles relating to how you organize and structure your business to best protect your assets. And if you do that intelligently, and this can relate to whether you're about to start a business or if you're in business, you might want to look at changing or reorganizing your structure to reduce your risk in this potential area. Risk is a big thing in business. That's what I'm going to talk about in this particular video. How to go about reducing risk through setting up your business correctly with regards to corporate structures and how you organize it. So bankruptcy, we've talked about that before. In the last video I mentioned, I talked a little bit about what it is and how it works and some of the downsides. Now, the first step in relation to bankruptcy administration, because uh, when you think about what bankruptcy is, it's actually a third party, a third person taking control of your personal assets, taking control of your personal assets, or taking control of the company's assets because you're unable to pay your bills or your debts. They take control of the assets so if you go bankrupt, they take control of your personal assets. If the company goes into administration or receivership, they take control of the company's assets so that they can look at how they can extract money from selling them or passing them on to settle the debts or pay your creditors. So if you understand that's what that process is, one of the things to keep in mind is when you organize and structure your business, it can make a big difference, which can keep things out of reach. One of the principles that I have when uh, going into business when you think about bankruptcy or administration in a business risks always come from people you know we might think it's an organization but risks typically come from people so one of i've got a few key principles about the way i always structure businesses the first thing to consider when you're structuring business is a business a trading business one that engages with lots of clients where they can potentially sue you or things could go wrong or they might get hurt or something might happen in relation to engaging with these people, that's a risky endeavor. That's a risky space. So one of the things to consider is in order to, if something does go wrong, that entity, so that entity could be you, it could be your company, for example, it could be a trust, that entity then any of the assets that it has may be at risk. So a really good principle to think about in relation to how you organize your business is a separation of assets and trading entity. Assets and trading entity. So assets, for example, could be a car, could be property, could be a house, could be cash, could be things that you own. Uh, the trading entity is the one that engages with clients. So it's a really good idea that your entity that trades, for example, you might have a company that's operating, not to have the same company that owns assets. You know, not to own your car, not to own vehicles, not to own property, because in the event that something goes wrong in that entity, then you've got, you stand the risk of losing those assets as well. So typically a really good way to organize a business and even the IP, you don't consider this an asset, but as you build a business over the many years, the IP, the intellectual property that you build up is very valuable, can become very valuable. Now, firstly, I don't have assets, personal assets, whether it's property or vehicles or anything else in the same uh, ownership that runs the business or a trading entity. I will separate that out. So what does that mean? For example, property, you know, if you've got property, I've got some real estate. I don't uh, ha own the real estate in the same entity, in the same trading entity. We keep that very separate. And also within the company, I tend to have an intellectual property entity where all the IP is owned. So personal assets are kept away from the trading business. 
and intellectual property is set up in a different structure as well. So in the event that something goes astray in the business, you can protect your intellectual property. It's separated, that makes sense. And there's a few different ways you can do that. If, for example, you're operating your business, in Australia, we call that as a sole trader, it's not a very good entity. Um, why? Well, if you run a business in your own name, so you could go, John Smith trading as ABC Ski Group, for example. What happens is if something goes wrong with that business, there is no corporate entity, it's actually you. And if at the same time, if you own your car, you own your house, then anything that you own can be at risk in relation to the business activity and if something goes wrong in your business. So this is an important thing to understand that if you run a business as a sole trader, and often people go, oh, I'm just gonna become a sole trader, it's easier, I don't have to spend the money on setting up a company or a trust, it gets very complicated, and that's fine. A lot of people run businesses as sole traders. And you obviously have to look at the risk, how big the business is gonna be, is there risk, the level of risk you've got in that in your business, and what, what potentially could go wrong. But you have to be aware that if you run a business, you're actually, bringing together in your personal name, you're bringing together assets and risk in one box. Because if you've got the assets, car, house, cash, whatever you own, and you're trading as yourself, then the risk is really, you're really exposing everything you have to protect that potential risk. And in the event of bankruptcy, you could lose all those assets and that risk, particularly through the business process. So it's good to understand that. Another thing to consider though, in a, in a company structure, a PTY, LTD, a limited company or a trust structure, it's not you, it's a separate entity. So if something goes wrong with that entity, then you're not, your personal assets are kept out of it. Yeah, this is quite a, an important distinction. So typically structuring to reduce your risk, you really do need to consider uh, separation of ownership and trading risk, which is a key principle. Obviously, you know, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not an accountant, so what I'm doing is giving you some principles around it and you should really maybe talk to your own accountant about your financial situation and how to organize yourself to protect risk. What I've found though is that when you talk to um, potentially an accountant or a financial advisor, they don't really think about things in relation to risk. They're more sort of considering taxation, how you can reduce your tax, uh, which is an important thing. You know, reducing tax is a smart thing to do. But at the same time, you want to take, when you're balancing that decision, you want to also consider what's the, what's the best from a risk perspective. So I use entities, companies, and trust to own assets. And these companies and trusts all serve a different purpose. So if I've got a company that's operational and trading and dealing with clients, potential risk, I tend not to have a lot of assets in those companies and those trusts. The trusts and the companies that own assets typically don't trade and have very little exposure and risk. That's been something that I've done over the years. I've learned that through having gone through some very difficult situations. As um, at a different stage in life, you don't want to risk losing and starting again, which can be really hard to get back on your feet when you start again and you lose everything. So st structures and getting yourself organized is a really useful way of reducing the risk in the event of bankruptcy. And an example where this might play out, we might have a company that does something that's quite risky. You might be a chiropractor, you might be a medical practitioner, we run an inspection business, and something happens, didn't pick, do something correctly, and someone's going to sue you. Yep. A good way to avoid personal risk is by not trading as an individual, as a sole trader, but having a company set up. Okay, so then if something happens, they sue the company, not you, and so you're, you're protected and your assets are protected. So that's not a bad way of going about it. If, for example, they do want to go after the company then, typically they'll have a look at what assets it has. And it takes money, you know, to engage a lawyer and to sue someone, it takes money. And the only reason they're doing that is to get money, yeah? That's typically what happens. And if they do a bit of research on the company and realize there is no assets that they can gain, even if they are successful, then the likelihood that they'll proceed is very low, yeah? And this is, it's, 
the thing to keep in mind is that it's not that you're doing anything dodgy in this process, that there's people out there that, you, you know, we've been sued by people that had no legit, legitimate grounds for it at all, zero. Yet they can still issue a writ, they can still start a legal process, it's still gonna cost me money to do that. So you have to think about it, that it's not just if you've done something wrong, people can sue you for any reason. Yeah, they have a lawyer, they've got some money and they say, let's go after them. We know we're gonna get some money out of this process. You gotta be aware of that. And the less that they can get in a process, the less likely they're gonna spend money. No one really is gonna spend money just to end up with nothing. Even if they win, they don't actually win, if that makes sense. So that's one way, one level of protection is separating the risk entity and the assets. Uh, if you do trade in your own name, for example, a good way to avoid any risk or exposure with your assets is don't own the assets in your name. Yep, so either have the assets in a separate entity. If you're married, you might keep them in your wife's name. So keep them separate, yeah? So that will also provide protection to your assets. So it's just a principle to keep in mind that can greatly reduce the risk of bankruptcy or your business going into administration and losing what you've built up before you go into business or during your process of business. And it puts you in a much stronger negotiation position if something's, something's gone wrong and someone's trying to sue you or have a go at you, you can sort of say, well, you know, there's not actually much there for you to gain and it can rationalize the whole approach and why someone's going after you. Because you might look successful, you know, people love having a go at people that look successful, say, oh, they've got plenty of money, let's have a go, let's see what we can get out of this. Uh, it's happened to me in the past, no doubt it'll happen to me in the future. Uh, so I'm just conscious of that when you build something good and you build something big and you sort of grow, there's always something that wants to come in and sort of undermine it and attack it. And so it's really important to keep that in mind as you build and grow your business and your assets. So that's the second step in this process of the uh, understanding bankruptcy and how to set yourself up best so that you can mitigate or reduce this risk for you and your business. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening. As you know, we grow organically. Uh, it's really people like yourself that enable us to get the word out. If you like what you hear, please uh, give us a rating, leave a good comment and share this with your friends. Thank you.